memory loss, becoming confused, and difficulties with performing normal daily tasks. These are all symptoms someone with dementia is struggling with. As the title and the thumbnail of this video already suggest, this video will cover all the ins and outs of dementia. I will cover some tips and tricks and a possible treatment plan for you to discuss with your personal doctor. So make sure to watch the whole video so you don't miss any important information. For those of you who are meeting for the first time, my name is Raoul. I'm a medical doctor from the Netherlands and I'm making weekly medical videos to educate myself as well as you, my viewers, because educated people make healthier decisions, which is the whole point of this video and my entire YouTube channel. This video also comes with a quick disclaimer. It's meant purely informative. This is not medical advice. And when looking for medical advice, you know it. Always contact your own doctor. And now quickly, let's get learning. So as promised, I will start by explaining exactly what dementia is. And as most of you, we can start by Googling it. And if you would do so, you would find the following definition. Dementia is a chronic or persistent disorder of the mental processes caused by brain diseases or injury and marked by memory disorders, personality changes and impaired reasoning. Simply put, dementia is caused by damage to nerve cells in the brain or damage to the connectivity of these nerve cells in the brain. And depending on the location where this damage has been found, the symptoms of dementia might differ among people. Here it is important to note that dementia is an umbrella term for a number of neurological diseases, of which the main symptom is decline in brain function. And in the DSM-5, which is the most used diagnostic manual to diagnose mental health disorders, dementia is described as a neurocognitive disorder. And in order to be diagnosed with it, you need to have at least the following symptoms. First of all, there should be a significant cognitive decline relative to someone's previous levels of performance in one or more cognitive domains. This can be in learning and memory, which can cause someone to repeat him or herself in conversations. It can cause someone to frequently lose objects, become confused about time and place, and or show repetitive behavior. It can be in language, where someone might develop difficulties in naming, fluency or grammar. It can cause problems in someone's executive functioning, this may cause problems in planning, decision-making, working memory, responding to feedback, error correction, and overall mental flexibility. Next up, it can also cause problems with someone's attention. It can make it more difficult to divide attention, retain attention, or it can lower someone's information processing speed. Then, it might reduce someone's perceptual motor or visual skills. This may lead to difficulties in performing previously familiar activities, such as using a telephone, handwriting, and or using a spoon. Lastly, dementia may also lower someone's social cognition. This may lead to problems with dressing, grooming, or acting in social situations. In addition, in order to be diagnosed with dementia, it's also important that the previously mentioned symptoms interfere significantly with someone's independence. For example, someone with dementia might require assistance with daily activities. And this cognitive decline may not be able to be explained by any other mental health disorder. And now you might wonder, how is dementia caused? As I already mentioned, it's an umbrella term for several other diseases. There are too many to cover in depth in this video. Therefore, I will name the most common groups of conditions which may cause dementia and some of the most common diseases in each group. And if you're interested in an in-depth video on any of these, let me know in the comment section so I might make one. First of all, there are several types of dementia that are progressive and aren't reversible. Examples are Alzheimer's disease, vascular dementia, Lewy body dementia, Parkinson's disease and creutzfeldt jacobs disease. Secondly, there are dementia-like diseases which may be reversible. Among them are certain infections, autoimmune disorders, thyroid problems, low blood sugar, too little or too much sodium or calcium, vitamin B deficiencies, and the usage of several medications. Which brings us to the question, how common is dementia? And according to the World Health Organization, about 55 million people worldwide are suffering from dementia for one reason or another. And this number is expected to get even higher, to increase even further, because the world population is aging. Now then, when should you contact your personal doctor? If you experience any of the previously mentioned symptoms, or you're afraid that you're suffering from dementia, 
always contact your personal doctor. He or she can help you to find out the extent of your symptoms, provide you with tips and tricks, and if needed, set up a treatment plan. Your doctor might do this by asking about your medical history, your current symptoms, the medication you're using, and afterwards your doctor might do a physical examination or do some blood tests to rule out any underlying causes. If necessary, your doctor could then refer you to a mental health professional or a neurologist depending on the underlying problems and causes. In addition, it is difficult to diagnose dementia. Therefore, your doctor might also perform several cognitive and neuropsychological tests, a brain scan like a CT or MRI, and again, some blood tests. Now, before we continue with some very useful tips and tricks, I want to ask you to please leave a like to the video if you did enjoy it. And if you're learning something, consider subscribing as well. I'm posting weekly medical videos to educate myself as well as you. So do me a favor and do yourself a favor and click that subscribe button. Now, considering the tips and tricks, it is important to mention that unfortunately, there aren't any tips which can cure or prevent dementia. But there are some steps which might help or delay several underlying conditions. Therefore, you could try to keep your mind busy, do mentally stimulating activities such as reading or solving puzzles. Stay physically and socially active. Try to exercise at least two and a half hours each week and visit some friends and family. If you're smoking, consider quitting, as some studies have shown that smoking might increase your risk of developing dementia. Maintain a healthy diet, as research found out that certain deficiencies in vitamins can also increase someone's risk of developing dementia. Lower your cardiovascular risk, which means prevent the high blood pressure, high cholesterol, diabetes, or if necessary, lose weight. Make sure to sleep 7 to 9 hours each night and have a structured sleeping schedule where you wake up and go to bed at roughly the same times. And lastly, treat any hearing problems as people with hearing loss have a greater chance of developing cognitive decline. Which brings us to some treatment options for you to discuss with your personal doctor. And here it is again important to mention that there is no cure for dementia, but some of the treatment options can help to manage the symptoms of dementia. So let's first start off with medication. There are several drugs which can temporarily improve several symptoms of dementia. For example, choline esterase inhibitors like Aricep, which work by boosting levels of chemical messengers involved in memory and judgment. Memantine can be prescribed, which works by regulating the activity of glutamate. Glutamate is involved in several brain functions, like learning and memory. And there are several other drugs which might be helpful, but these solely depend on the symptoms you're experiencing. For example, if someone is experiencing depressive symptoms, your doctor might prescribe antidepressants, and if someone is developing hallucinations, your doctor might prescribe antipsychotics. Furthermore, someone with dementia might also benefit from psychotherapy, also known as talk therapy. This can help to decrease behavioral problems and increase someone's personal, social and or occupational functioning. One of the possible treatment options could be occupational therapy. This is aimed at showing someone how to make their home and work safer and teach coping behaviors which can help to do so. The purpose is to prevent accidents, manage behavior, and prepare someone for further progress of dementia. I'm going to stop the video here because it otherwise might become overwhelming. I hope I gave you some useful tips and tricks, and I hope you know now what dementia is. If you have any questions, let me know in the comment section below, and I will do my best to answer each and every one of your questions. For those of you that are interested in learning even further, check out the playlist in the description. And if you did learn something and if you did enjoy the video, please leave a like. This will help out the channel tremendously. Consider subscribing. Again, I'm posting weekly medical videos, which could be beneficial for you. And you would also help me to reach my goal of 100,000 of 100,000 You would help me to reach my long-term goal of 100,000 subscribers. Furthermore, if you can't get enough, I also have an Instagram account at How to Medicate. Thanks again. And especially thanks to my Patreon supporters. Thank you, Sebastian, who is an investor tier supporter. I will see you all next week with a new video. Bye bye.